Welcome to Raw TV, real and willing television, where we talk about topics that students think about. I'm Amante Hall. And I'm Gabrielle Dorasami. So we have a big show for you guys today. We are talking about hooking up. Shacking up. And breaking up. Mm. So these are three things I feel like everybody can relate to in yes. one way or another. I mean, just look at our music industry, for instance. So many of our top 40 right now are kind of based around hooking up in one way. Hooking up. I have a question for you. So have you ever talked to one of your friends about hooking up? Uh, okay, yeah, I think a lot of my friends actually do, yeah, myself included. I mean, I feel like we're at an age right now where it's almost, um, like, not expected in a way, but it's kind of, like, prevalent in our, like, demographic, I guess. Yeah, so there's a pressure. You feel like you have to oh, like, absolutely. commit to some things? Well, I feel maybe some people aren't looking for a commitment. Oh. So we have a lot to talk about today, we don't do we? We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> and what would you say to your friend if they ask you, like, I'm thinking about doing this, I'm going to do this right now. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I'd have to like almost turn to Oprah in a way and channel her and maybe give him a car at the end. <laughs> Who knows? Like give him some gifts. There's a gift for you and you. <laughs> exactly. So this is kind of like what you and I are talking about yes. when we think about hooking up. But actually our very own Courtney Buck hit the streets herself to figure out what you guys think about hooking up. Hey there everyone. I'm here on the Southeastern University campus asking everyone what their opinion is on hooking up. Hooking up would be a one night stand, I would say. When hooking up is when a guy just meets a girl and they just hook up. Yeah. Hooking up's like you know, hooking up with you know, a girl, going somewhere. Yes. To me, hooking up is finding a person and kind of just going off and doing your own little sexual whatever you have going on and I don't think it's right in any way, shape, or form. Hooking up would be two people getting together and having a good time. I don't know, like, maybe like making out with a, another person for the night or... Other stuff. Other, <laughs> yeah. And there you have it, friends. That's the scoop on what the campus thinks hooking up is. Okay, so we're talking about hooking up. Let's <laughs> dig into this. What does hooking up mean? All right, all right. So a lot of people might have some different definitions of hooking up. What is your definition, up. Kyle? My definition. <laughs> your personal definition. For, for lack of better terms, you, you're doing it. You know, doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with like, comma? No, oh. not comma. Okay. You know, but <laughs> you know, just with like no strings attached. Basically, basically, you're just going out, kind of having like casual sex with somebody. Like it be, it could be a reoccurring thing, but like. No, you're not in there's any no time. commitment. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, yeah. That, there's that, no, that's no, strings, no strings attached. Yeah, that's how I would describe. No it. No commitment, yeah. definitely. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it could be, you know, it doesn't even have to be sex. Sometimes it mm -hmm. could just be, you know, getting together and, you know, just make out buddies. Make out buddies. Yeah, yeah. Buddies. <laughs> your friends playing, and benefits. Um, playing so Scrabble, maybe. I don't know. Is it like <laughs> I, I see you? That's what the kids are calling me, these days. And I'm gonna come over there, you know, and put one on you. Yeah. Is that is that how it works? Well, I, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's a, a lot of the times I would think, I mean, from what I've, you know, heard from friends and stuff. Tell me all of your experiences. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've experienced. Um, it's, I, guess, I guess it's people that you don't really know. I mean, you, it's not like, it's like you've known them for, like, it, your whole yeah. life or that you're yeah. really close friends with them. I mean, sometimes you could be close friends, I, yeah, but I mean, usually it's like you meet somebody, you know, and that night you're like, hey, you're, you're cute, I'm cute, you're like, you know. I would almost think that it would be the complete opposite of that. A lot of the times it's, you know, your friends with benefits. So you know the person, maybe you went to school with them or you worked with them, and it's like, you know, you like me, <laughs> I like you, Let's you're not up. in the mood for a serious <laughs> yeah. relationship, I really don't want a wife, you know, maybe we can just, you know, <laughs> work something for a husband, you know but, what I mean? Like, but actually, in, in, the, in the other opposite sense, some people might look at it and think like, oh yeah, hooking up, I've been in a long-term relationship and we like hook up with each other, you know? Yeah. So you could have the, the one extreme of like, oh, I'm just hooking up with everybody kind of thing, <laughs> but then you could also have the... It's totally committed, and then you're just calling the act of sex basically hooking okay. up. I'm hooking oh, yeah, up with okay. this person. It's interesting because okay. you guys both yeah. said it's no strings attached and friends with benefits, which are both movies that I yes. think are right. <laughs> so, like, moving from that to, yeah. like, kind of like what Hollywood, do you feel like Hollywood has kind of, in a sense, like, almost glamorized hooking yeah. up in a way? Definitely. Okay, so I got this. All right. Okay. I, from, a, from a young age, okay. I was raised on chick flicks. Like, oh. anything Matthew McConaughey. I'm not a, I'm not ashamed to admit it, okay? okay. All right, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Yeah, that's his favorite song. <laughs> I, I could not. 13 going on 30, favorite one. Actually, how to lose guy in 10 days. Anyways, That's so, good yeah. So, you know, like I grew up on those and, you know, just seeing that, seeing like, yeah, it's kind of like, okay, they saw each other once, love at first sight, and now basically the guy mm. tries to chase the girl the whole movie. 
to basically have sex, mm. you know? And mm. then they fall in love after they have sex. So that's Sometimes they don't the even fall in love, really though. Goes. Sometimes it's just like a one and done deal. They have sex you know? and they're like, oh, And they never, never see mind. each other again. So that, what is, that what's a the lot benefit of, of having this hookup session? I don't know. I, I want to always think that the benefits could be just if you're stressed or even yeah. if you're just not enjoying life right now, maybe it's, I mean, it's so, just like, it just makes you forget, you know, So all instead the of bad putting things. a CD on, they make you calm. you like, hey girl, <laughs> you know, let's, let's talk about it. Different kind well, of music. Well, actually. <laughs> different kind of music. <laughs> um, <laughs> no comment? <laughs> well, well, actually, I, I actually went over to um, another local college, Florida Southern College, and I was skating okay. around and everything. And my friend and I ran into a whole gr group of people and we just, we got talking about a bunch of stuff. And this one girl, I guess she was a lesbian, but she actually will just have sex with, with guys as well. Whoa. And she was describing it to, obviously, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with this, but this, <laughs> this yeah. is what she told me. She was describing it as, to her, she just wants to feel loved in any mm. way. Like, she needs very physical love. So to her, yeah. hooking up is literally receiving love. Wow. That's interesting. That's a yeah. 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 outlook. Kind of deep. I think, I, I think sometimes um, on the other aspect <laughs> of that, it's kind of like, I mean, like a hobby for some people. Mm -hmm. You know, they just go out on the weekend and Not see how many people. Notches on your bedpost kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> see how many people you can, you know, hook up with. Yeah. You know, how many girls you can get, how many guys you can get. Yeah. Um, and it's almost kind of like, you know, a competition with your friends. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes, um, yeah, it could be like love, but then also it could be, I mean, nothing, you know, I guess emotional going into it. That, you yeah. just feel like it's physical. And I think you know, the movies especially highlight mm. that. You know, they're, mm. oh, I have a busy job and I have all this stuff and it's just so stressful. You know, you know me, you know, I know you and you're not yeah. looking for anything and I'm not looking for anything. Yeah. You're not expecting anything from me. You're not expecting exactly. that ring, you know, six months down the line. So let's just sleep together and we'll feel better mm -hmm. at the end of the night. And they're and always can, gorgeous in movies they're anyways. They're so pretty. <laughs> like, what else? But so, is that real yes. life? No. <laughs> Maybe, you know. Do, do you think it's kind of like, like comedic, like really funny. Do you think Hollywood makes it so funny to the point where it's like, this is really not funny. Like, like comedic to the point well, it's not. I think, I think what they don't show you is the aftermath of like, exactly. if, yeah. if you're a virgin yeah. and you have, and you hook up and that was your first time you hooked up, mm -hmm. you might be expecting like an emotional commitment out of that mm -hmm. person. And then they just leave you out to dry. Like, no, no, I just, I just wanted to use you to have sex once and I'm out, you know? Yeah. So they don't show you that the aftermath of, Oh wait, there's actually feelings involved. The it's not just baggage, physical, right. you know. Well, how sure. could you, depending on how you met? Like, why would you expect that from someone? I don't know. Well, actually, scientifically, you know, our body releases an emotion and a chemical called right. oxytocin, and it's actually nicknamed the snuggle hormone. What, and what it does? <laughs> I didn't learn that in science class. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's actually it's nicknamed the snuggle hormone, and what it does is it Sounds really it connects adorable. you with somebody else that you share those intimate moments with, which is why, like, you know, when you if you were to do something like that, or even just like fall in love with somebody mm -hmm. and not be with them anymore, even if you don't desire yeah. them anymore, like you don't love them, right. but you still miss them, or you still like long to, you know, to be with them or spend time with them. That's why. So I can only imagine it would be even worse for sex. Oh my gosh, yeah. Wow. This is huge. I mean, it really does affect us. I mean, whether we're laughing or we're, you know, watching a chick yeah. flick, it really yeah. is all around us. And so sometimes you see in relationships, you know, sometimes hooking up can lead to relationships, which then lead into moving in together. So I know that you went out on the street to find out what people thought about shacking up. Hey there, friends. I'm here to find out what everyone's definition of shacking up is. I don't know. Okay. Shacking up to me is when you have a man and a woman come together and they live together. They're not married, but they live together and they pretty much act like a married couple. Oh. Like sex? No. I have no clue what shacking up is. Before I knew what shacking up meant, I thought it meant when someone got into a shack, but now the definition of it to me is when two people live together who are not married. Shacking up, I've never heard that before. <laughs> Pretty much going all, whole, all the way. Okay. Yeah. What the shacking up? Marriage. There we have it, everyone. It looks like we may need to redefine what shacking up means. Well, that was awesome. Was it kind of odd to talk about people, like go up to them and <laughs> what do you think oh about moving in together? It was weird, but really. <laughs> I was happy that people were happy and able to talk about it. Like yeah. I was expecting people just to be like, "Yeah, I got somebody else. That's really weird and awkward." But people were actually very open and you know able to be like, "Well, here's what I think, and here's how I feel, and this is what I think it is." That's and awesome. I was so happy to hear that people were willing, real that, and willing. To exactly. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. I want to kind of bring it to one of my favorite shows, actually, and I know you guys watch it as well. It's How I Met Your Mother. 
and yes, and, yes aw. Never, never and so <laughs> when you think of how I met your mother, I know I think of the world's cutest on camera couple, Lily and Marshall. Lily. No, wait, can I argue that real quick? And <laughs> Him and Pan from The Office. All right, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for plugging that in. Either way, <laughs> moving it no. back to Lily and Marshmallow, okay? I'm a, I'm a fan. Marshmallow. Exactly. <laughs> cutest little couple, and they live together. Exactly. Right. They live together before getting married. So, so did Jim and Pam from The Office. Okay, guys. <laughs> Thank you for that. Jim and Pam, well, yes, whoever, whether it's Lily and Marshall, whoever it may be, on camera, obviously this isn't real life, but yeah. like, do you think that kind of dynamic is doable? Is that realistic? I think in today's society, even though you know we may feel differently, I think that it's definitely you know mm -hmm. something that is smart almost to think about sometimes you know if mm -hmm. you are you know trying to save money you save money Absolutely. on bills and right. you know living together I think is, is a huge financial burden that you can share together and I think if you're already having sex with somebody then what's really stopping you from living with them they're just there the all the time now you know? so yeah. Yeah. there's that they just never oh, leave exactly. yeah. <laughs> it's like you wake up you again oh, oh hey not? Yeah, <laughs> get your clothes right too. there there you go open the drawers <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> I think a lot of people do it. I mean, I mean, I'm not obviously um, a lot of my friends, but a lot of people um, that are older and um, even our age, they they live together and mm -hmm. they don't see it as a big deal. And when you're in a relationship, um, a lot of t a lot of things that's like popular right now is you talk about. So when are we going to make that next step? It's almost mm -hmm. like a next step in a relationship now is moving in together, you know, we've already gone through all these steps, now we're going to move in together. It's not even marriage anymore, it's just moving in together. Mm -hmm. So when do you so. give them the keys to the doors? <laughs> mm -hmm. You never know. I guess it's different for every couple, what do yeah. you think? Well, well kind of the reverse of what they're kind of saying. Um, obviously, I'm engaged. Yay. Aww. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you're, you. You're doing it right! I'm studio audience, all, all right. Um, but anyway, so... You know, I, we've been engaged, we've been together for almost five years now, and we always get the question constantly, like, oh, are you guys going to move in together? You guys are engaged mm -hmm. now. You know, what's stopping you? And honestly, there, there's a few things. One, we don't just hook up with each other. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's definitely, that's the temptation there to just go all out and just, you know, do whatever we want since mm -hmm. we're living together. Yeah. And then the other thing is actually a lot of research shows, even in secular, Christian, it doesn't matter, um, mm -hmm. living together before you get married, actually, once you get married, um, it, it, it has a higher rate of divorce. No, Iro yeah. Ironically yeah. enough, yeah. ironically yeah. enough, because a lot yeah. of people look at it and they think, oh, well, you're used to it. You can you're find each other's quirks out yeah. and stuff. Right. But mm -hmm. it, I, I don't know exactly. Well, I'm not super <laughs> well versed in this, but I've actually, actually seen that a lot more. of places, like a lot of organizations that like help out, you know, help families mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff. They say that you know, if you live together before you get married, you have a higher chance of divorce mm -hmm. when you actually are married. So and I want to stay married to. My, my fiance. Oh, so. I think she probably wants to be married to you. You're quite the catch. But I wonder if that was not, that was weird. That was not, I'm, like, I'm engaged. Buddy. I'm so sorry. You're going to kill me. But I wonder if, She's you know, killer. it's, whoa. Okay. I wonder that if it's not just, you know, a taste tester for marriage. Like it's, it's yeah. you know, you're yeah. learning the quirks of each other, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. So it's getting used to the fact that men don't always put the toilet seat down. And you're going to fall in at one in the morning when you have to get the bathroom. I hate that too. I don't want to know that. <laughs> or, <laughs> I don't want to know that. No, and, and, I, and I would hope that I would never have to share right. a toothbrush like Lily and Lillian Marshall, Marshall sharing a toothbrush in the show, which I think is quite disgusting. I'm Chuck quite and Sarah. That's called Chuck. This is just Chuck. Our friends in the office, do they share a toothbrush too? Ours are better. We win. Oh, man. Oh, man. But you know, I mean, I mean, for like learning about the quirks and everything, just from being together for yeah. again almost five years, like, like we already are like an old couple kind of thing. Like we'd much <laughs> rather stay in, and we have like those little quirks about each other and stuff. Like, and it's just because because you guys we're drink coffee together. What's that? You guys drink I, coffee in a little old rocking chair. I, I don't drink coffee. I'll, <laughs> I have my porch. little like little wheatgrass little smoothie <laughs> vegetarian smoothie thing Hippie. or whatever, and, she, and she'll have you know her Red Bulls and coffee and everything. So you're saying you can get to know each other without like living together? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And I honestly think it's been a lot better because at the end of the day, and it sounds weird, you know, we are able to separate, have our own time. But you know, when you're living together, you are always with each other. And and I always mm -hmm. love to be would be with Tara. Yeah, I always love it. But sometimes you know we have to go our separate ways and just kind of. <laughs> Whew, all right, breath. you know, calm down a little bit. Yeah, like, so when you're when you're married and actually living together, you do have to find those times in the day where you can just be like, all right, let's you know, t let's take take like ten minutes or something. Let's go, whew, just a little bit, and then let's yeah. get back together. Because then coming back together after that time, like just separate a little bit, even again, just like ten minutes, mm -hmm. is like, all right, let's, all right, oh man, I miss you, you know, like whenever like Tara and I are apart, it's like, oh, I miss you so much. Like, Aww. how are you doing? It's That's like, so yeah. cute. You guys are so cute. But a lot of people, a lot of people. Um, they live together mm -hmm. and even have children mm -hmm. 
without the intentions of getting married, and they don't ever get Courtney married. Courtney and Scott so, Kardashian, yeah. Yeah, you know Calm what I mean? Down. I actually had a math teacher in high school, and she lived with her boyfriend, and she swore she would never marry him. <laughs> and it wasn't because she didn't love him, she loved him very much, but it was because she said that he had to fall, to make her fall in love with him, with her every single day if they didn't get married. So she could break up with them anytime she wanted oh my gosh. to. Isn't Laying that crazy? Down the law. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And so actually when I went for went on the street, I talked to people and a lot of them had the same opinions. Huh. So let's see what they have to say about breaking up. All right, everyone, I'm here with a million dollar question. What's the best way to break up with someone? It's gonna hurt either way, but I feel like it should be respectful and try to take their feelings into consideration. Not over text, no. I would say meeting them and explaining what's wrong. A good way to break up would be in person with good effective communication between two individuals. Talking to them in person, talking it out. What's a bad way? A bad way to break up with somebody is just flat out ignoring them. A bad way to break up would be Facebook. Maybe just changing your status and oh, just being like not telling them and then just blocking them from everything. I think an inappropriate way is to tell all of your buddies and have them tell people who tell people and then find out later. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like there isn't really a good way to break up with someone, but we definitely heard about a few really terrible ways. Courtney, that was crazy! Isn't it though? I can't believe that! Me either. Some people get passionate responses. about these stories. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some of the responses that I got from people with their stories of how they were broken up with, mm -hmm. some of them were heart wrenching, yeah. mm -hmm. and others were just downright funny, and others were just cruel. Like, I feel yeah. bad for laughing at some of them. But some people were just really have no decency whatsoever <laughs> when breaking up with people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, we're talking about breaking up with people, mm -hmm. and you're just like, kick! You're getting kicked out today! <laughs> you put your underwear in the wrong place, right next to my toothbrush. <laughs> you know I brush my teeth in the morning. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. I can't believe this. So we did a survey mm -hmm. with 80 people, mm -hmm. and we asked them about breaking up, mm -hmm. and this is what they had to say. This is what it, the survey said to us. It said 71, 71 had relationships that ended in a breakup. Okay. Um, and this is what they had to say about it. They said it was not good. Mm -hmm. It was awful. Mm. Oh. It was bad. <laughs> it was disappointing. Oh. That's the worst. It was heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Cry me a river. <laughs> Cry me a river. It was smooth, and it was confusing. Mm. I, I think the worst I heard of all of those was disappointing. disappointing. Yeah. Because yeah. like when your mother used to say, not like, I'm upset with you, no. I'm, I'm disappointed. disappointed. Yeah, that's that's mom you. for mad. That was the <laughs> worst feeling in my life, y'all. So it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. disappointing. disappointing. Well, especially when you go into a relationship expecting something, mm -hmm. yes. and then you leave disappointed. Absolutely. You know, it's like going into a buffet, and then there's your favorite food is not in the buffet. <laughs> oh, that's oh, you know yes. what I mean? Yes. Yes. The worst. Relationships that's... or food are on the same level. I don't know. Yeah. I like food a lot. I mean, I love my boyfriend, but. So do you, dip, you dip it in a different sauce? It's or is that... in there. No, you just leave empty-handed. Oh, you know? well, oh, yeah. Good good that. I think that you know the like society, like we see relationships, and um, but me personally, you get into a relationship thinking mm -hmm. that it's going to solve all your problems, and if mm -hmm. it doesn't fit the mold, or maybe mm -hmm. we get impatient and don't want to fix the problems, we yeah. just end yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's Absolutely. a fairy tale, like Hollywood sets up a fairy tale of what a relationship should be, mm -hmm. and you know, like, it's this perfect thing between two people. And you know they may fight or whatever, but they work it out and all that stuff. And so when you come to the conclusion of breaking up, and you finally have that decision that you're going to break up, or you just get plain dumped, you know it's very. I mean, it could. It's always a sticky I've seen, situation. Yeah, always. I've seen people that like go into depression mode for days. Oh. And some of my friends, you know, get the ice cream out and, and I was watch. Say, you, know, you know, like Taylor Swift sings dress. about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. always. Yeah. So without breakups, she wouldn't have a career. <laughs> you think about Ben and Jerry's is good for good mm. for this. Yeah. And, but like when you think about like movies and music, mm -hmm. I mean, like, mm -hmm. do you feel like the music or the movies like kind of like play it up a little bit, yeah. or do you think it's mm -hmm. that dramatic? I gotta say that you know the time that I was broken up with. Terrible, but thank you. We're gonna need the Ben and Jerry's on you know, set. We need to, you know, <laughs> Come on. We need to be sponsored by. But I think that the music almost made me stay sadder longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it, true. It plays on your emotions. Play on your emotions, mm -hmm. and yeah. the thing is, I didn't want to turn the music off. Well, I, I uh, remember. So you get kind of addicted mm -hmm. to that sadness. I think. Yeah. I remember one time. Okay, so so this is a whole story here, but. This a long, this a while ago. I got broken up with on MySpace. On MySpace. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, I didn't even and thought about that. Oh, oh, I just, so I just aged myself. Yeah. Wow. So I was making a comeback. Justin Timberlake bought it, but you know, so I got broken <laughs> up with on MySpace, like early Ouch. high school. You know, whenever that was, and um, this this relates to the music. And after after 
she broke up with me, you know, read the message. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I, like, I listened to, <laughs> this also, my, I don't know if this dates myself, but the, the, um, but the band They Used, I, like, listened to, like, two of their songs on repeat, and I kid you not, I, I had them on repeat for at least a week straight. And I oh, I know. To You're just sitting there else. like, they know my life. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. I was like, and, like, especially Use is, like, a really emo band. So I was like, oh, <laughs> no. So it's important to listen to good music when you're about to break up with someone. Do you, like, put it on when you're about to sit down, let's talk. Um, well, well like, after, after the week, eight week was over, I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to listen to other good stuff. I was oh, like, yeah. Well, let's talk about, like, the decency, because I know you guys talked about this for a second. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I am a huge fan of Sex and the City. And in their one episode, she got broken up, Carrie Bradshaw, mm -hmm. um, with a post-it note. Okay. Oh, oh, baby. Was it on the and, so, and so the whole episode was about how she got broken up over this post-it. Is there a certain way or a certain common decency to like go about breaking mm -hmm. up with somebody? Oh I think it should, uh, personally for me, I think it should always be in, in person, person. Mm -hmm. and yeah. not, and especially not around other people. Or I in think, a text. think definitely yeah. in private because mm -hmm. um, you just you're going to humiliate them even more. For sure. um, but if you do it, you know, even even if you like write them a letter and send it to them in the mail, I mean. That's it's impersonal. You know, it's yeah, yeah it's absolutely. very impersonal. You, know you always what I mean? you always want to like do it in person. You know, like again, pull them aside, and also then afterwards, like if if you don't want it to like end badly, or like if you want to stay friends with like I I you know like again, pull them aside, and also then afterwards, like if if you don't want it to like end badly, or like if you want to stay friends with like I I like mm. when was it? It was in like tenth grade or something. Um, I uh, me and one of my friends broke up, and and we decided like. Afterwards, we didn't talk about it at all to anybody. It was just one of those things, yeah, we broke up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we went like a month or two without talking. And after that, though, we realized, wow, we are like best friends. And we and because like we didn't talk crap about each other or anything, we kept it private. It we out. took each other aside. Mm -hmm. um, it worked out. And now she's like a sister to me, you know? She's and she's me. definitely not a viable candidate at all in my <laughs> eyes, you know? So, so that's like the so opposite. What about the people who say, um, well, I just feel like God doesn't have us together? And they say, let's I, move using on. the God no, no, no. card. Now, yeah. now I, I think I think some sometimes that is one hundred percent true. That is one hundred percent true. It's not part of the plan. But other times it's kind of copying out mm -hmm. a little bit, yeah. you know. It's hard to deal with, you know, like, oh, you're not gonna argue with like what God told you yeah. specifically. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, I mean, like here we are and we're talking about all these crazy things and yeah. things that are very relatable yeah. to people. Um, so we've talked about like just a like, quick recap, hooking up, which mm -hmm. is huge. Mm -hmm. And then of course shacking up and yeah. now breaking up. So what are we as Christians supposed to do in this mm -hmm. situation? You know, Gabrielle, I think, uh, what would Judith do? <laughs> <laughs> So today we talked about something everyone is familiar with, hooking up, shacking up, and breaking up. But I really want to tell you about what God thinks about these three things. First I want to start reading Jeremiah 2. But before then, I want to tell you that this is God speaking to you and I. Here it is. I remember the devotion of your youth, your love as a bride. What wrong did your fathers find in me that they went far from me? When I read that, I really picture God's heart breaking. And it really emphasizes to me that God sees us as His bride. How beautiful is that? That He's not this mechanical God up in heaven who's trying to structure us of what to do, but He sees us as His bride, that He loves us and cares for us. And so you, you may ask, why did I choose this scripture out of all scriptures to talk about hooking up? I chose it because it really lets me know that God wants more from me than to just have instant pleasure, than to just be kissing my best friend or my friends or going to clubs and just having sex for nothing. He wants you and I, as his children, to be purpose-minded. Next, I want to talk about shacking up. I know a lot of us want to decide to live together before getting married because honestly, it does seem a lot easier. You get to split the bill, you get to live together, come home to this person every day, which could be a bad thing, could be a good thing. But I really want to tell you about why God doesn't want us to do this. Because more than likely, if you live together, you're going to have sex. And for God, sex is something that is more than just instant pleasure. I want you to read Mark 10, 8 through 9. And the two shall become one flesh, so they no longer are two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Next, and finally, I want us to talk about breaking up, which all of us have gone through at least once in our lives, either in middle school, in high school, or now in college. And I wanted just to let you know that there is restoration in God when it comes to this. 
that God will restore you from whatever happened in that relationship. And I want to tell you that there is hope because God cares for you and I as his bride. And I, lastly, I just want to tell you that I'm not telling you about this because I'm trying to be judgmental. I want to tell you that I've gone through this and God healed me and God restored me. And now I'm in a relationship that God is the center of. And obviously we're trying to get rid of the baggage that we both accumulated in our past, but God is the center of it. And through him, this relationship will flourish. I'm sure you're asking, what would Judith do? Judith would obey God. Judith would surrender my relationship to him because I know that he cares for me and for you as his bride. Well, Judith always has some great things yes, to does. say. So proud of her. So we talked about so much this episode. Yes, we did. We talked about, of course, the hooking up, which is always interesting. Mm -hmm. We talked about the shacking, shacking up, up and then the not so happy breaking, breaking up. up. What did you learn through all this? I'm definitely not gonna be hooking up, <laughs> shacking up, and thank God I won't be breaking up with Fingers anyone. crossed. You're going to stay away from <laughs> the Taylor Swift sad songs. I'm going to throw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Well, we definitely talked about a lot. And so, of course, we always just want to pray for everybody. Yes. You know, yeah. through this, we definitely learned a lot. So I'm just going to say a quick prayer for everybody. Yes. So, dear Holy Father, uh, thank you for allowing us to come together and, of course, make this fun show for everybody. And I pray that you just guide everyone as they make these big decisions in their lives. And no matter what uh, avenue they decide to go on, just, just help them remember that they can always be used as part of a bigger plan. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we want to thank you, of course, yes, for coming always. along on this emotional roller coaster of the hooking up, breaking up, and, of course, in the end, hopefully shacking up for the long run. <laughs> yes. And we want you guys to always remember to, to live, live it, it raw. raw. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>